Hello family, my name is Chris. I am your home gamer dad and welcome to a tabletop simulator showcase for Camp Grizzly. Yeah, I realized with this series, I don't need to just do showcases on TTS for games that are currently on like crowdfunding, game found or Kickstarter or whatever, but I can do them for super ultra rare, hard to find, ridiculously expensive, I really want in my collection but will not pay that much money type games. That would be Camp Grizzly. Plus, it's October. Who doesn't love a scary game? And this just oozes the theme of crazy killer stalking teenagers in a camp and just, just, oh man, it's so gruesome. This game, even though it has like, you know, all like kind of cartoony, uh, you know, a vibe to it or so, is super gruesome, especially once we start digging through like a bunch of these uh, cabin cards over here or something like that. You're going to be seeing things that are just crazy. So, for anybody watching with younger kids, or if you're a little squeamish, or if your kids are watching this and your parents aren't paying attention, hello, 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 trust me, I, I'm there, I'm with you, I get it, I get it. Um, there may be some uh, things that'll be a little, uh, little much for younger viewers, but I'm gonna try to keep it as good as possible as we go along. Now, uh, as far as how the game runs, I'm just gonna be playing it right now. We'll do a full session, we are gonna be doing uh, the campfire, which is a normal setup right here. We'll be fighting Otis, of course. He is the main bad guy for the game. This was one of those games that was on crowdfunding like years ago. And man, it was like, I think it needs to come back. It needs to come back. I know Ameritrash Games, there's the people that produced it, aren't doing anything anymore with it or whatever. But somebody needs to get the rights to this and re get this out there for people and whatnot because this is a fantastic, fantastic game and I am not spending 300 bucks in order to be able to go ahead and uh, just get it to my collection. Uh, just, oh man, it's so good, so good. So we have right here, uh, just keep in mind, uh, what makes this game so crazy also is like, you know, you got a lot of credits and everything out here. We got so many amazing people that, you know, are part of this and whatnot and guys, back in 2013, yeah, please, come on. Come on, come on, come back, come back, please, 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 or at least give somebody else the ability to print this game. The objective of Camp Grizzly is to survive. Makes sense. Uh, Otis, our killer, will be running around the camp right here, stalking our characters and anything else that happens to pop up. We'll find cameos and uh, camp uh, campers and whatnot that'll pop up too. Those will all go towards the body count of uh, Otis. And as we explore around, we're going to be finding little question mark tiles, which I'll pull one right out now so you can see what it looks like. And those are going to go into our inventory, and those are going to contain things like a crank, or a rope, or a gas tank, or just stuff like that. And as we collect items, everything is generally a key and then two other things. Once we have three particular items for a finale, we all have to get, whoever survived, I should say, uh, needs to get to a space in order to trigger such finale, flip this over, finish the finale, anyone that survives wins. That's that's really the big thing. It's surviving a night as Otis runs around. This game is very easy to, uh, to learn, to teach, very hard to play because Otis is unforgiving, especially in later ones. Now, if you have TTS, uh, I would definitely recommend uh, going ahead and setting this up beforehand. There's some really great automation. Like you can hit the pick counselor and it'll just throw uh, all the pieces to whoever it is playing. I'm playing by myself, so I kind of had to arrange things a little bit differently here to make some room for stuff and whatnot. Uh, and I'm also using the flat boards here just so you guys can see my characters a little bit better, but the game will throw the actual standee for Otis around. Speaking of the game throwing it on, let's go ahead, I'm gonna hit start game. Remember, this is Campfire. Every one of these has a particular setup for it. So this quick and dirty setup, whatever, right here, will show you which one of the, uh, you know, where, where the question marks are, where the locks are, things along that ways. Whereas I can hit start, I'm gonna back up so we can see it a little bit better. Hit start game, boom, 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 and it sets it all up for me. That's fantastic. Now, uh, one of our first main objectives, yes, Otis starts right there. I'm gonna actually move you off the board for right now because I wanna use this. Uh, I'll use that again later. Uh, we need to get these keys because as you see, all four objectives require keys. There may be a spare set of keys underneath these question marks. Of course, there are the items underneath the question marks as well. Could also be some bad things where Otis pops up out of nowhere and kills us. Also could be some good things where we'll be able to get uh, useful items. Which right now, let's go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna kind of deal every 
a camp counselor. That is who we're playing as. So I am playing a quote unquote three player game. There is a solo mode to this where you're playing as one counselor and it is set up a little bit differently, but should this game go back to Kickstarter anytime soon, which apparently there's rumors about it, I am 100% picking up regardless of anything. And then once I get it, I will deep dive into this a little bit more. For right now, we have, uh, boom, Sherry. She is an orienteer. Sherry may use nature trails freely. I'll explain what those are as we go through them. Sherry can't be lost. If she starts her turn in the woods, she may immediately return to the nature trail of her choosing. Over to the left, you'll see move and health. Everybody has the same amount of health, which is uh, four points. Each point of health has a specific move value to it. So at number first one, she is three. Once she takes a wound, she's only able to move one, and then one, and then two, and then dead. If she panics, which means she gets in a scrap with Otis and he hurts her, she runs three spaces. You have to move three spaces. The only reason I have this lock on her is just to kind of uh, signify she is my first player. So we're going to move left to right, starting with her. Again, everybody gets two survival cards in the beginning. These are very, very helpful cards. And the first one we get... Close call, play after a counselor draws a cabin card, ignore and discard it. Yes, 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 very, very useful right there. That is a single use card, as you can see in the upper left, it is also yellow, so you know that. Uh, another single use card, these come in single use and permanent. Survival instincts, play on your cabin draw phase, watch, it's a lot for those. Draw three, well, a lot by me too. Uh, draw three cabin cards, choose which one you want to encounter and discard the other two, yeah. Yeah, that'll be wonderful in order to avoid any uh, un untimely scraps with Otis. Uh, Tracy right here is our Scream Queen. Um, I feel Sherry is more of a final girl than Tracy. Tracy is one of the first ones probably to die, but she has some really good stats on her. Plus, as a Scream Queen, when Otis stalks, you can lure him in your direction. You would roll a D4, and if it's a three or four, Otis would stalk Tracy, helping keep him away from other uh, campers and pulling Otis towards her. Uh, movement of base three, but then it's two, one, four, and then dead. Panic of three as well. Flipping our first card, we have, hey, perfect, scream for help. Uh, play when Onus strikes your cabin, move up the three other camp, can, uh, counselors to your space to help. That's good, that means if anybody else has any weapons, they can jump on in and help fight Otis. Oop, let's flip that over, there we are. Wait for me, move to another, oh wow, so she's about, that's funny, that's crazy how I'm, I shuffled this, I know I did, I hit the R button a thousand times before I hit this. Um, these two are very similar, and these two are very similar. Very, And it also plays with their characters. That's actually really cool. I wonder if you're going to get this, Kevin. Kevin, our, our jock-type character, uh, is a lifeguard. If Ode strikes within three spaces of Kevin, he may join the fight. He's not going to move to the space, but he can join the fight, which is nice. Uh, and then water sports, he gets plus one on all of his rolls during the boat finale, so we're going to try to get to the boat in order to get out from here. Three, two, one, one, two, and his panic is a two. You would think it'd be higher, but it is what it is. Uh, single use, when fighting Otis, you can just use this as an improvised item in order to do a d6 roll, which is amazing. That's if you are unarmed, that means having no weapons. We'll find weapons in the cabin deck. Ah, here we are, permanent, athletic. You may move one additional space during your move phase. Fantastic, I'm gonna actually throw this up here. So now Kevin effectively is four, three, two, two, three. So that is great. That is amazing to have that much extra movement. Otis himself starts with stalking of a two because we already killed somebody up here from the setup. I'll explain how that works in a second. Um, stalking is how many spaces Otis moves after all the counselors takes their turn. He moves that many spaces towards a counselor. If he's in a space with a counselor or Otis strikes, he attacks with a D4 and does one damage if he wins. Basically, uh, if the campers have, or counselors have a way of defending themselves, they roll whatever dice is associated with it. So like, this, for example, you would roll a d6. Otis would roll a d4. Whoever gets the highest total wins the encounter. Otis always wins on ties, and if Otis wins, uh, a damage is done to your counselor, and they run away. I can still move that, right? Yeah, sorry, I gotta lock that in so it doesn't move anywhere. Um, as Otis gets stronger, his, d, uh, his dice get bigger, and of course his damage gets uh, higher as well, and then his stalk also goes up higher, so he's able to move around a lot. That gets higher as body count starts going up. So generally, if you find something that says plus one body, then this would move up. Um, or if he happens to be in a space with a camp counselor, this moves up if he kills them. A cameo he'll kill. You know, just there's a bunch of the different things that are going to be found within this game that Otis can, you know, go and kill. So 
That's how that is. And that's just a general overview of the game. The base game will come with six characters. So Karen, CJ, and Jody are all base. All the rest of the characters you see here are all from expansions. So again, if this, if and when, I'm going to say when, this comes back to Kickstarter, I will deal with all that when available. But for right now, Jerry, you're up first with a three movement. Now, these are your nature trails right here. Normally what you do is if your character is, say, like right here and you want to go to this spot. So every movement, let me tell, tell, explain this first. Every square is a movement. The trails just show what's connected. You never touch the trails. The squares are your movement. So a movement of three for Sherry could be one, two, three, just like that. There's only one diagonal spot right here that you can move is in the commons, but everything else you have to go around. Um, if Sherry was here and she wanted to get up this way, she could freely move there. That's no problem. But like if Tracy was here, she would need to roll a D6. On a five or a six, she makes her way across. On a two, three, or four, she stays right where she is but loses her movement. On a one, she gets lost and sent to the woods where then on her next turn, she would roll a D6 and send something would happen. Whether she takes an injury, Otis comes and attacks her, or she returns to a random trail. And that's what all the numbers around on here as well. You would roll a D10 and she would just kind of appear on one of those. So with that in mind, I need to get these keys. I have a movement of three. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, down here to the girl's shower. And on her next turn, she can go one, two. And then for a movement, basically all of those points are like action points of sorts. You can use an action points to move a space. You can use an action point to pick up an item. You can use an action point to reveal an item. If you land on a space and end your turn, you can reveal an item for free, but you can't pick it up until your next turn. So they say move, but really I would relabel this as like an action point. So everybody has three action points, three, three, and then they adjust based off of how much damage they have. And as you can see, it gets high at the end because they're going on a bit of an adrenaline rush. Now, that's it. That's all I had to do. Got three actions. Boom, I'm done. We go over here to the, uh, what is it? The Grizzly, um, Camp Grizzly Cabin Deck. Take. Flip, and we do the thing. We have a plot twist. Leave it. Drop a random object, weapon, or item in this space. I don't have any. Choose two. Move two spaces away or protect what's yours, Otis. Okay, I see. So it's either I would drop everything. I don't have anything, so this is great. Um, and then I get to choose. So yeah, all right. So we're going to do that. We're going to move two spaces away. And uh, we'll go, you know what, we're going to do this. We're going to go one, two, and that's it. Unfortunately, I can't flip that because I've already ended her turn. But on the beginning of your next turn, I'll use an action to flip it, pick it up, and then she can start making her way to the key. So getting these are a very good thing. All right, so we did that. That's good. Uh, Sherry went her turn. Tracy goes. All right, where are we going to go, Trace? So all these locked spaces right here, our characters cannot stand on until somebody with a key uh, lands on it. That's why getting these keys are very important. Could be a spare set of keys somewhere, which would be great. Um, I'm gonna actually have Tracy go this way. So one, two, three, she has three movement to her. She's right here in the dining hall hanging out. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get her this item and then she'd have to backtrack unfortunately around, maybe even try to get to the stables. Uh, but for right now, I think that'll be good. Just, just <laughs> splitting up is always the best idea to do in these situations. Am I right? Uh, let's grab this, flip it over, and we have another plot choice. Blackout. For as long as the blackout continues, counselors without a light source are horrified. Oh, no. A counselor at the tool shed can restart the generator and discard blackout. Counselors are no longer horrified. Counselor that restarts the generator draws a survival card. Oh, no. Where is... Where is the tool shed? Uh, swimming area is right there. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. That's it. No, that's a sports. Yeah, ba -ba. Where's the tool shed? Where, where? Hello? Duh. It's the spot where Otis starts. Great. Fantastic. Uh, I mean, if Kevin moves into this spot with Otis, he could fight him and hopefully get him to go away. And if he does, then I can activate the uh, the ability. But for right now, everybody is terrified or horrified, I'm sorry, because of the, um, the shed uh, losing power and everything going black. Now, horrified is a status element. I just got to read up on that really quickly. 
All right, when horrified, your turn ends immediately, which is, you know, it's it's over anyway for her, so that's fine. You are minus one to all die rolls. Oh no, so that six that I would attack with Otis would be a minus one regardless until the end of your turn. Track using horrified counter. So that's really it. If you're horrified, you're a minus one to all your rolls, which is really not a good thing at all. All right, uh, Kevin's gonna go now. Whoa, he gets a movement of four, which is great. I forget what this is. Oh yeah, that's right, this is fighting. All right, so he has a movement of four. Maybe I'll just have him, do I have him go to the, yeah, we're gonna have him do that. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four up to the commons in order to try to grab this one. I know we're all kind of far away from the tool shed, but maybe maybe I'll find a way in order to swing back around to it as soon as I can. So that's, it's, it's planning. It's planning and hoping everything kind of goes the way I need it to as, uh, as things happen. God, another one of these. Uh, environment, heavy fog. While heavy fog is in play, which it is now, counselors are unable to play survival cards. At the end of one full round, which is gonna be uh, after Otis goes, roll a d4, heavy fog stays, discard heavy fog. Okay, so that stays here. A full round is almost done right now because Otis needs to take his turn. So Kevin has finished, whoop, we go up to Otis, and what Otis does is he stalks. He has a stock value of two, so he's moving two spaces, and he will go to the closest camp counselor that he can get to. Locks, the woods, trails do not affect Otis whatsoever. He just moves wherever the heck he wants to. Um, one, two, three, four. Uh, you're too far away, obviously. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so yeah, definitely moving the traces. He's gonna go one, two, just like that, and that's gonna be it. Now, we have done that. Let's. Roll a d4. Yeah, come on, come on, three, four, three, four, three, four. Yes, it's a three. Oh, fantastic. Okay, uh, that should pop away thanks to automation. Yep, uh, and now this is discarded. Goodbye. And now we can continue to play uh, our other stuff. Oh my goodness, all right, that could have been a whole lot worse of a turn, but everyone is also still horrified. You, right now, are gonna spend one of your actions to flip. No, no. Okay, well, Otis is gonna strike her right now. That's bad, that's a terrible thing to happen. Uh, Otis is gonna jump into her cabin and he is going to attack her. Uh, this this doesn't matter because she doesn't have any means of defending herself, right? Uh, counselor, yeah, cabin card didn't matter. Yep, cabin, it doesn't matter. That's all about cabin card fate. That was flipping a token. Uh, huh. She's gonna get hit for one, ow. And now she's gonna panic three. She has to move three spaces, uh, considering the lock. So one, two, three. She's gonna move right up here onto the keys, um, and she's gonna pick up the keys at the beginning of her next turn. Oh man, I need to be able to heal her. Uh-oh. I'm pretty sure her turn now immediately ends because she panicked away and everything, and I don't think she has any more uh, moves on her anyway, so we're just gonna, I, I also think she draws the cabin card, so we're gonna go ahead and just do that anyway. Um, oh, she found, oh my goodness, wow, this is perfect for her. Sneakers, clothing item, while equipped, you may move one additional space during your move. Oh, good, good, she needs that. Put on those sneakers, girl. Oh boy, whatever whatever it is she ran in, must have gotten some, uh, <laughs> some damage to it, because uh, now she found those sneakers, so even though she's injured, she can at least move two spaces a turn now, which is amazing. Um, yeah, that's great. Oh, that's awesome. What is this one again? Play, uh... Okay, so I would have to play this before I did it, so I got lucky there, but that's all right. And then this is play after a counselor draws. All right, so we'll see what happens next. Tracy, you are up with a movement of three. We're not rolling anything yet, and I think I might, if I can get this lock undone, she might be able to get to the tool shed. So we're gonna go one, two, and she's gonna use her last movement to flip this over to find a rope. All right, cool, so she'll pick that up her next turn, so at least then we know we'll have, uh, we'll have Sherry with keys and Tracy will have rope, which keys and rope for the boat. Good, I need to find the crank. Keys and gas for the barn and rope. Uh, that's probably it then, because all the rest, yeah. It's four items spread around evenly, as you can probably see right there. So that's that's pretty good. I love the 3D images as well on uh, this map. So you have, you know, the tower right here, which is really cool. Uh, the boat's 3D-ish. Our van getaway is the mystery machine. Very well done there. And then we have uh, the barn up on this way. All right, so let's pull a card for her. All right, and flip. What do we got? Hey, we got some cameos coming in. Officers Jenkins and Taylor. You got a permit for that? 
Place the officers on a random nature trail. Stalk one, targeting the counselors. If they cross paths, discards a weapon. We don't have any weapons. If Otis crosses paths with them, he kills them both. All right, so I need to find these guys and put them on the uh, the board. All right, they don't have any other like cardboard things or whatever, but these are the cameos. So it's these two guys. And then if you go all the way back up here, it's like all of these characters are uh, cameos and other characters that could pop in at any time during the game. All of them are successful to be killed by Otis and increase the body count. Now we need to get uh, our cops right here who just entered into the game onto a space. To do that, you'll notice that we have numbers one through 10 here. So we're gonna go ahead and roll a D10. Roll it up. We get a three, so they pop in right on this locked door. So now, at the end of the turn, right before Otis goes, they are gonna go, and stalking pretty much is moving. They're gonna move one space closest to the nearest counselor, which is gonna be Tracy. Once they cross paths with her, uh, let's see, discard a random weapon. We don't have any, so it's actually really not that bad that what they do. Other cameos do a lot worse things, for sure. Um, and I'd rather wait on her next turn in order to be able to pick up a, uh, that rope anyway. Kevin goes. Kevin has a movement of four, which we know already is going to be one. Flip for two. Really? Yes! Pick up the crank for three. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. And uh, we're going to move here for four. He is going to probably take a side trip to the tool shed in order to turn everything back on. And then because we have the keys, the rope, and we don't have it all yet, but we're in possession, we're very highly likely that we're gonna get it, uh, we'll be able to pull off uh, the boat escape for this one. Oh my goodness, that would be amazing. Oh, that would be amazing. All right, we got a cameo in play right now. Let's pull this one. What do we got here? Um, all right, premonition. Oh boy, plot twist. Draw a cabin card. After looking at the card, place it face down in front of a counselor of your choice. Instead of drawing from the cabin card, the counselor must draw the face down card on their next cabin draw face. Okay, so this is kind of one of those things where it's like, it's semi-cooperative. I don't know why you wouldn't want to help your uh, your fellow campers, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, what is this then? Uh, it's an identical set of keys at the camp. Really? Do I just want to give it to her? Yeah, okay, we're just going to do that. We're going to give, we're going to, Grab this, we're gonna flip this over. So this is gonna be Tracy's on her turn. She's gonna draw this on her turn. So Sherry doesn't need these keys at all. She just needs to get herself to the swimming area as fast as can, uh, avoiding Otis the best way that she can as well. Um, all right, so we know the counselors, these guys are gonna move, boop, they're gonna be on her. We don't have any weapons or whatever, so it just is what it is. She'll move away and they'll probably keep chasing her and whatnot. Uh, Otis then goes, he has a movement of two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hmm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use her Scream Queen ability. I'm going to draw Otis my way. So we're going to roll a d4. And on a three or a four, this works. It's a two, so it doesn't work. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. Um, let's see. There are tie. One, two, three, four. No, I'm sorry. Nope, nope, nope. He is still, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're still closest at four. So one, two. So Otis is right there. Uh, not that it matters. Otis can jump around all different types of ways and whatnot. So that is another full round done. Back to Sherry. All right, Sherry's still far enough away from Otis. I'm going to go ahead and... Oh man, I I, I, I want to get back over there and everything, but I can't really do it with Otis uh, where he is. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna leave the keys behind. And I was gonna see him weird. One, two, because I know that, um, what is it? Uh, Tracy over here is gonna get a pair, spare set of keys at, at the beginning of her turn. So Sherry's just gonna move her two right here next to, um, to Kevin. Uh, right, what is this, horrified for the blue? Just wanna make sure, okay, good, yeah, yeah it's, just, it's just the rules. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this survival instincts right now as well before we do anything. So we'll move this to discard pile and we're gonna draw three cards. One, two, three. We're gonna flip all three, see what they are and keep one of them. All right, <laughs> I don't like this already. Oh my God, he didn't make it. Uh, increase the body count by one. 
investigate the body. If you do draw an objective token, then you are horrified and tempt fate too. Tempting fate happens when you do something stupid, like, you know, checking a dead body. You pull cards from the cabin deck and any cards that are red colored go to um, Otis immediately coming at you and attacking. So tempting fate is bad. Uh, I really don't want to do that. We got lunchbox as a camper. Aw, when Otis strikes, you could safely run two spaces away. Lunchbox isn't so lucky. Discard the poor guy. Oh my goodness, poor lunchbox. Uh, lost in the woods. Move to the woods. Follow the lost directions on your next turn. That might actually not be the worst thing because Sherry can't get lost. If she starts her turn in the woods, she can immediately go to a trail of her choosing, which would basically put her right at the swimming area. Yeah, all right, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do that one. So uh, both of these can go into here. We're discarding both of them by lunchbox. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and do Lost Woods. Sherry uh, jumps out the window apparently or something along that way, runs away. So she is in the woods. Okay, that's good. Fine, fine, fine by me. Um, that is then going to end her turn. What did I do with the marker? Oh, it's all the way over here. Well, you went. Boom, I already drew, so that's good. Tracy, you're up. We're gonna go ahead and ah, take this rope, if you don't mind, please. <laughs> it's not a weapon, officer. You could be fine by that, trust me. Uh, what are these again? Otis strikes, right? Uh, okay, uh, and then we have two more movement for her. So we're gonna immediately just go one, two, to the swimming area, fantastic. So. Now, once everybody gets there, we'll be uh, in a better shape, in theory. <laughs> Something bad happens. Close door, plot twist, choose one, open the door, draw a survival card, attempt fate two, back away slowly, move back to where you started this turn. Oh, you know what? I think what I'm gonna do, uh, when Otis Cabin moved three other campers to your space, that'd be great, but Otis, mm, Mm-mm-mm, what do I wanna do? I mean, she would literally start right back here anyway, and she's right where I need her to be. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're just gonna go one, two, boom, she's right back to where she is, back to waste, so we're playing this very cautiously, because if we do stupid things, dumb, bad things are gonna happen. That's how people lose this game really fast. Uh, all right, so we pulled the card from there, hooray, hurrah. Kevon, where are you going, sir? You need to get to that tool shed. One, two, three, four. On your next turn, you'll go to the tool shed and get rid of the horrified because if we're getting to a point where we're gonna fight Otis or like keep him busy or whatever, then we need to get rid of that blackout and whatnot. So Kevin's right now at the campfire, which is a good thing to be at right now. We'll pull the cabin card, we'll flip it. We still haven't really found any weapons. Uh, oh, a bandage, any phase, heal two injuries, may be used on yourself and or another counselor in your cabin. Can oh man, that's great. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So he gets to keep this. This is one of his uh, keep cards, which is great. Uh, you can have an, an unlimited amount of items and clothing, I believe, uh, on your characters, but but you can't have, um, you have two hands, so depending on if you draw a weapon, the weapon will show you how many hands you need in order to hold that weapon. We haven't drawn any yet, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, so Kevin is finished. We'll go ahead and do this. Tracy doesn't have any weapons. That's all it says, right? Just wanna make sure. Uh, random weapon. Don't have any weapons, that's fine. So you guys actually stay right where you are. You're not gonna stalk anywhere else because you're just, you're in a space with a counselor, which is fine. Otis though, man. Otis will go one, two, stalking uh, Kevin up here because that's the closest one to the tool shed. All right. Oh boy. Sherry uh, is lost. She starts her turn on a nature trail of her choice. So we're gonna go all the way to one, and once, I mean, sorry, to two. So basically what it is, if you're on a nature trail, you would start in the spot, you know, that it's connected to. I mean, I could start here and land her there. No, she needs another move, that, no, 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 we gotta end this, gotta end it, gotta end it right now. Um, or I could start her at four, and she could be the one to do it. You know what, let's, let's do this, I'm gonna do that. Instead of her starting at two, I'm gonna have her at four, come here. So now she is automatically in the tool set. She took, she found a way out here, rummaged through the woods and using her amazing abilities as an orienteer, got herself to the shed in one fail swoop. 
Um, Council and Tushkan can restart the generator and discard it, and everyone is no longer horrified, and she gets to draw a survival card, which survival cards are great. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that. We'll grab both of these uh, tokens. So now nobody is horrified anymore. The lights are back on. She draws a survival card, which is good. Uh, play when Otis is defeated in a fight. Reduce one of his stats by one. Oh, that's great. Oh, good. Which may end up happening because uh, we're kind of together. Uh, I'm going to move one space here because then on Kevin's turn, he can use this in order to heal uh, up uh, Sherry by one. You'd think that he'd be going after Tracy, but nope, nope, him and Sherry, they seem to have a thing going on. Love it, amazing. Uh, and that's gonna be the end of her turn. So let's go ahead and pull a cabin card, flip. Oh, a weapon, nice, shard of glass, self-inflicted, ouch. If you win a fight with a shard of glass received. So she can now fight against Otis using a D4 plus one. So that's what it is. If you can see the little hand mark down there, that means she can hold that in one hand. Not the greatest of weapons, honestly, because uh, it hurts her, but it's it's better than nothing. It means at least she can defend herself in one way, shape, or form. So that's good. That's fine. We'll go over here. Boop. This is discarding one, right? Yeah, good. Your turn, my girl. What can you do again? Otis strikes, right? Not going to worry about that. Play at any time. Move to a counselor spot. All right, you have a movement of three. I think, again, I'm just gonna move you to the shed. One. Man, I wanna, I wanna see what other things are. You know what? Two, three. I've been able to move three spaces because I have the keys. I can remove this. So that's gone. Uh, where's the back? Here it is. Uh, oh, no, I can't yet. I can't yet. Never mind. Never mind. Haha, <laughs> I take it back. She can't do that because it is not the end of her turn. I'm sorry. One, two, she'll just be in the swimming area then. That's fine, a lot goes here, I'm sorry. Uh, because now it's the end of her turn and this is what she flips. Ha ha, spare set of keys. So she gets a, an additional set of keys um, just like Sherry has. So, well, did Sherry pick them up or did she run away from them? No, she ran away from them, that's right. So there we go, that's what I meant to do. Ha ha, I meant to do that, ha ha. Take, flip. Ooh, what do we got here? Target practice, block. While equipped, I need two hands to do, or do this apparently, uh, reduce injuries you receive by one, discard after blocking three injuries. All right, so we'll put this on. It requires two hands, so she can't have any weapons. But at the very least, if Otis comes and attack, she can uh, block his one attack that he's doing right now. So there we go. Beautiful. Oh, I'm still nervous about where the heck is he's gonna go from here. Uh, Kevin's gonna go, and we're gonna go ahead and just immediately use this. Uh, this goes here. It's only one healing, but it's better than none. She's back at three, so she's all bandaged up. And, uh, yeah, um, she, oh my God, Otis is gonna jump right into this spot with her. Um, he's not gonna move. He's not gonna move. He's gonna, he bandaged her up, and now he's gonna sit here and hopefully try to defend her should Otis attack, because at least then he'll have a D6 worth of attack. Maybe he'll have something else. Boom, a chair. Excuse me? Excuse me? <laughs> a D10? Holy jeez. If you roll a one with a chainsaw, your attack fails. And oh, oh, oh. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Hiya. Don't worry, girl. I found something to defend us. No problem. Now, uh, you move one. You're gonna go there because there's two counselors here. They both gotta get out of there because if he moved onto this space, then it's, I think it would actually affect everybody. Yeah, yeah, he crossed paths with both of them. So both of those guys, um, what is it? Both would, uh, they would basically confiscate our shard of glass and our chainsaw, oof. But with that said, Otis is gonna stalk onto the campfire. Dun, dun, dun. He's gonna attack both of us. Now, Otis will attack everybody within the space. This is. The campfire is considered a, quote, cabin for sake of uh, just the space being the space. Um, so he will attack. Now, we get to choose who he attacks first. He's going to attack Kevin first. If Kevin defeats him, which means he rolls a higher number than what Otis rolls, Otis bounces away off of the board. He's gone for right now. He will be back later. Uh, we just got to hope we do that. So I'm going to actually roll uh, for Otis first. See what we can get. Otis rolled a three. 
All right, so now we're gonna roll a d10. So we need a four or higher. It's in our favor, but yeah. Come on, 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 come on. Yes, a nine. Wow, that was really good. Fantastic. Yeah, eat that, bear man. Uh, so now Otis rah, runs away into the woods. Uh, at the beginning of his next turn, uh, I would actually roll a uh, lurking action and he would appear in one of the uh, the trail spaces. Uh, you could also just roll a d10 and go there anyway, but at least that's a thing. Ooh, 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 that was terrifying. So boom, you guys went, you went. Oh my God, John, it's Sherry's turn. Sherry's turn, Sherry is going to, now because her boots, she actually has a move of four as well. She'll go one, two, three, four. Sadly, she got to wait to get the next turn for the swimming hole, uh, but at least we'll get away uh, that way. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, that was Otis's turn that did the attack. There we are. So we still got to draw capping cards and hope for something. Oh, are you, oh no, she can't get lost, but I got to wait for another turn. But it's fine, I had to anyway. All right, cool, no problem. Ha <laughs> ha, out of all the people to get that, you are the best one to get it. Back to the woods you go. I don't know why you need to go to the woods now. I, I must find my nature. I gotta see where this shard of glass came from. We're gonna go over to Tracy right now. If Otis strikes, I at least can pull Kevin to me. Actually, I can pull Sherry to me too, if that's what happens. Um, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna leave her right here. You can choose to forego your movement. So with that, we're gonna draw, flip, and okay. So it's not an Otis Strikes card, but it is a red card, is what I meant when it comes to tempting fate. Chase, Otis moves to your space and rolls a D4. On a one to two, receive one energy uh, and blah, injury and move one space, repeat the chase. Um, on a three or four, move two spaces, outrun Otis, remove Otis from the board and draw a survival card. Great, all right, so. So that's where he went. He came up here and he decided to scare ah, the living pants off of her. And now he is going to run and try to get her. What do we roll? Boom, we rolled a one. That was bad, right? Yep, receive an injury and move one space away. Boom. So the only space she can move, uh, we're gonna move here. And Otis gives chase. And we're gonna roll uh, another one. I don't even know why I'm doing this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Uh, play after a counselor draws a cabin card. Ignore it, discard it. Ha <laughs> ha, it doesn't say you have to draw another one. Sorry, sorry, use the things, use the things. You are away, get out of here, you're here. Boom, all right, fine. <laughs> Silly me, I forget that I have those cards. That's why you draw them in order to have them. I and mean, it wasn't a no to strike card, so it wouldn't really matter anyway. All right, so she is done. That's it for her. Bloop. Um, Kevin goes, I guess she could have blocked it as well. Uh, while equipped, reduce injuries received by, okay, so she would have actually reduced that by one anyway, so that's pretty good. Regardless of anything, regardless, I, I got it to work. One, two, three, four, because he has a movement of three plus uh, athletic, so that's good. Now whatever I draw, I have to deal with regardless of anything, which happens to be a plot twist. Oh, good, moral dilemma. Shoes, Otis strikes your space, or uh, oh, draw a survival card, then Otis strikes the counselor with the most injuries. Everybody has, everyone's at full health, so I think what's gonna happen then is I'm gonna roll a D, uh, D6, and it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Yeah, we'll do that. So we're gonna draw a survival card because those are the best things to have. Yoink. Otis is gonna strike regardless of anything, so ha ha. When Otis strikes, safely move a counselor from that fight to your space. Okay, cool, awesome, 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 awesome. So we'll, we'll be able to kind of uh, mitigate something that comes out of that. So we're gonna roll a D6, and again, it's one, two. She's in the woods, so yes, Otis could strike in the woods. Uh, three, four, five, six. Hey! -ya! Okay, so Otis is striking in the woods. When Otis strikes, safely move a counselor from that fight to your space. We'll immediately bloop this right here. <laughs> and uh, I guess Otis smelled something. Oh, oh, honey. Oh, wow, wow. And she runs away using her amazing powers to go back to the spot where she started from. Man, this is. It's working out, that's great, but this is also terrifying that it could be anywhere. Otis could even be 
right here on two uh, at the beginning of the next turn. So that's terrible. All right, you've gone, you went, we drew, that's fine. Uh, it is now the cameo's turn. So we'll move you to the campfire because you're going to try to get to the kids or no, no, it's it's faster. Cameos don't bother with locks too, I believe. So I'm going to say no. So they'll move there. That's fine. And then Otis will uh, lurk. Nature Trail 6. So he popped in. Do, 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 where is 6? Right here. So see, the game automatically puts in there, which is great. Again, you would just need to roll a D10. So Otis is all the way up here. He got really lost in the woods, unfortunately. All right. Otis has made his turn. Bloop, bloop. Sherry goes. We're just going to move her one right here and end her turn. Draw, flip. Hey, we got a, a camper. Oh, come on, Morgan. Really? I could have used you a while ago. Oh, at the end of your turn, Morgan attempts to heal one counselor in his cabin. Pick a counselor and roll a d4. On a two to four, heal one injury. Fantastic. On a one, oopsie, Morgan caused two injuries. And he feels really bad about it. I live by a code. Everything is in my control. Yeah, says your bloody hands, you weirdo. All right, well, we can take this. Gonna flip, flip it here, and actually, Jerry, all yours. He is your 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 dude that falls around. I think he's actually up here as well, right? Yeah, I saw lunchbox. Here we are, Morgan. Yep, Morgan has apparently has been in the swimming hole uh, this whole time. Can I uh, move and get a better view? Whoop! Hold on. Yep, there he is. We got good old Morgan right here, uh, right next to Sherry. He'll be on the boat with us trying to escape. Man, that'd be cool if he. Uh, we can actually like free a counselor as well, or not a counselor, a uh, a camper. Uh, even though lunchbox is, you know, <laughs> he's dead meat probably at this point. Uh, we'll go over here to Tracy. Uh, so she has keys again. I'm just gonna put this here just to show we have rope, we have keys, we have a crank. That's what we need for right here. Boom, 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 which is great because that is the exact finale we want for Kevin. Uh, she is not going to do anything. She is just going to draw from the cabin deck. And we find a bear trap, an item. Oh, look at that. On her move face, she can place a bear trap token in her space if Otis crosses paths, which means moves into a space. That's what crosses path means. Uh, lower his stalk by one and remove him from the board. Oh, that's cool. So he would he would slow down. Uh, yeah, we'll just throw that up there as an item. That's fine. Uh, cool. Done with that. Kevin now goes. Kevin, again, is just going to whoop. Hey, ladies. Who wants to go for a nice swim? Uh, with that said, he has his chainsaw. Hmm, do I want do I want to give the chainsaw to somebody? He has an on. Uh, um, I'm gonna do. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm gonna leave it because we don't know what's gonna happen at this point. He's gonna keep his chainsaw. Flip, uh, flip. Oh no! What is this? Otis strikes every counselor in the cabin is horrified. Oh my goodness! Oh boy, do I have anything? Uh, nope. Uh, your cabin moves up three counselors. Oh, no. Uh, when Otis is defeated, reduces stats by one. That's not going to help. And, uh, okay. Well, Otis strikes for one final attempt to kill us this way. So where did he go? Uh, he's up here. He comes and now he is attacking us here before we jump in. Now, can I do this now, or should I have started the finale? Oh, yeah, we're going to do this. We're just going to have fun with this, because um, I bet this is going to be awful. Every counselor in the cabin is horrified, because this, this just makes this... I love this game, because thematically, it all seems to just work. It's like how it works with Final Girl. I don't know how it works, but it works. Now then, uh, we're going to go ahead and chainsaw his butt. So he's going to roll a d4, because that's what his attack is on. Can't believe no one died here either. He rolled a one. Yes, unless we roll a one, which would be the worst possible thing ever. But it is possible. Uh, we rolled a four. Wow, that was close. Wow, that was close. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. All right, so uh, we beat him. We beat Otis just demasked from here. Blah, sure, we sent him out and away. And that was uh, a terrifying uh, encounter right there. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right, so now we're gonna pretty much go right to the finale. Uh, to do that, uh, we're just gonna do the stuff. We'll have the cameo move. We'll have Otis, after he licked his wounds, go back to the board, nature trail seven. But, but there's six. 
Uh, seven, right, because the, the piece covers it up. So he goes back to this. He likes this. What is this? The buck cabin. All right, cool, whatever. Uh, and now it is our turn. We are going to be doing the finale now. Now, the base game comes with two finale cards apiece. There are uh, other finale cards that you can find because uh, there's three more in the boat, but they are all based off of uh, expansion. So I just pulled the two that were from the base game. We're going to shuffle those two up, and we're just going to flip the whole thing over, and whatever we see is what we get. One, two, three. Boom. All right. We have sharks and minnows. Otis, okay. <laughs> Engine trouble. So it's kind of our crew of sorts, but sort of not. A uh, guy and two girls. Move Otis to zero on the body count uh, track, then place each counselor on the body count number that matches their current move. That's without, I think that's without any modifications. Maybe it is. Um, probably not. Uh, in turn, each counselor rolls a d6. Swim from left to right across the body count track. If you reach 13, you are safe. On a one, Otis swims two, on uh, two, Otis swims one, three, all other counselors swim one, and Otis, uh, and then two, three, and four, uh, four, five, and six is the guy who went If caught by Otis, discard a weapon and swim two spaces or be killed. What? Repeat until all counselors are safe or dead. If any counselor makes it to 13, continue. Wow, all right, let's, uh, let's set this baby up. All right, I have everybody on the board right here. Now remember, there is no injuries that are gonna be taken according to the Sharks and Minnows card. So the uh, other cards that like uh, Tracy had and everything aren't gonna do anything. Because remember, she had uh, this right here, this target practice. You can't really swim with that. So, you know, she loses that. And the bear trap doesn't mean anything. She also doesn't have a weapon. Sherry and Kevin each have a weapon. So they have at least one chance to get away from Otis should Otis catch up to them, which is just terrible. Oh my goodness. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start all the way back from the beginning. So Sherry is gonna go first, and then we're gonna have uh, Tracy go next, and then Kevin will go after her, and just kind of go around there. The first round, everyone is terrified, and I don't blame them, for sure. So all of their dice rolls are gonna be reduced by one on the first round. After that, they're just gonna be normal dice rolls. So we can't roll a six, but you can't roll a zero either, but it's a higher chance of bad things happening. Otis starts at uh, zero. They all have their move of three, because again, this says, uh, place each counselor on the body count number that matches their current move. Their current move is three on all of them. Uh, and that's, I don't think it counts modifications. You guys let me know if you think so, but I think this is more tense this way. So here we go. We got right here, our first roll for Sherry Rolls. We got a five, which actually ends up being a four. So she swims one. So Sherry is up here. She is no longer, whoops, come here. Get, can, can I unlock the terrified token? Thank you. So she is no longer terrified. Perfect. All right, so now we have Tracy goes. Hup. She rolled a six, which means she rolled a five, which means she moves two. Oh my goodness, that's, oh, <laughs> getting getting these now, uh, but it, it's gonna be probably really bad later. All right, so now we have Kevin, he's gonna make his roll. Yep. He rolled a five, which is then a four because he's terrified for, or horrified for this one turn, and that is one. And now here we go. Sherry, swim girl, swim. What do we got? We got a four. She moves one. All right. Then we have Tracy goes. A one. Oh no. Oh, his stocks. Two. That's one. Two. Oh boy. Here we go. Kevin rolls. Hip. Swim for your life. <laughs> All right. Well, I mentioned him being athletic and everything. I guess this makes up for it. One, two, three. Sorry, ladies. I'm. Uh, I'll send help. I swear. All right. Back to Sherry. Yeah. A five. You jerk. You get back here. And then we're just going to have Tracy. Also, wow. Okay. This is, this is rolling really well so far. Kevin goes. Unless I start rolling ones and twos. There's a one. Get back here, kids. We're on Sherry now. Sherry roll. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh no, that's bad. What do we got? Oh no! All right, Otis is caught up to everybody. Uh, we're gonna discard uh, this from Kevin to move him to. So he's up here. 
Uh, we're going to describe this from Sherry because he does this to everybody. This it's whenever he lands on a space, he kills them because uh, he's just going nuts. Move her to, and you, my friend, are dead. Ah! Um. Oh my goodness, whose role was that? Whose role was that? I wasn't paying attention. I was just kind of rolling, and then I got scared. I think that was Kevin. I will say that was Kevin. So now we're going to go back to Sherry. Oh goodness, Sherry, where, what do we got? Come on, hi, hi, hi. Six. Okay, so she's moving too. She, she's at eleven. All right. So now we're back to Kevin. I think. I think so. I hope so. But I think it doesn't matter either way. Oh wait, no. She moves up three. She's at twelve. She's at twelve because six is move up three. Uh, perfect. So he's up at three too. They may actually live to see another day. Roll for Sherry. Five. She survives. Yes. And Kevin. Will Kevin make it? He makes it too. Are you kidding? <gasps> wow, they made it. <laughs> Tangled in thick reeds, 30 minutes pass, but he does not surface. <laughs> All living counselors win the game, or do they? <laughs> we will see Otis again. Once Camp Grizzly makes its way back to Kickstarter, I'm putting it out there in the universe right now. It's going to happen. I swear it's going to happen. It better happen. Please let it happen. But there you have it, everybody. That is Camp Grizzly. Now, there are a lot of... We got pretty lucky with some of the things that we got pulled here. But, like, as you can see, bad stuff is going to happen. Increase Otis' attack by one. So that means he would be rolling a D6 going forward. If he started killing people on the board, that's when his stats start going up again. So, like, if he ended up going to... I don't know. Uh, we'll put the body... Where is the body count thing? I threw it. Somewhere. It doesn't matter. This is automated, so it's fun like that. But if the body count thing ever landed here, then his attack would go up, uh, his damage would go up, so he'd do two damage. And then if he ever gets up here, he's pretty much one-shotting all the counselors. But man, that would be uh, an awful thing to happen. Another plot twist. God, look at these, look at these cards. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You, you guys can go back and look that if you want. I'm telling you, great, great art. This is some fantastic art to this game. It is. Cartoony, but it's also gruesome at the same time. I love it. What I also am finding weird is I have yet to be able to find another Odin Strikes card. Uh, move a counselor choice to and begin fooling around. Tempting face. So fooling around is another mechanic within the game uh, that I really didn't do much of. Here it is. Fooling around often requires a temp fate roll. Pick a counselor. So that means both of them are on the same spot and tempting fate then happens from there. And again, tempting fate, doing something stupid, risky, or naughty. Uh, you draw X however many is and discard all cards except for red cards. If you have at least one red card, then Otis attacks and his attack increases for every red card drawn. So if we happen to have grabbed this, it would be temp fate two, just for example, one, Two, we would flip these over and any red cards would go to Otis. So say I didn't get this one, which was what? Uh, Timmy Teddy, oh, Timmy Teddy. Oh, Timmy the Teddy, uh, of course. It's like, uh, oh, my teddy bear when I was younger. Oh, it's, it's, uh, the lore is so much fun. But if you happen to grab like two red ones, then Otis would strike and his attack would increase by one. Uh, and if we happen to find another red card, so say we drew both of these, then it's one Otis strike, but then his attack would increase by two, and that would be absolutely awful. So this game can sway so fast <laughs> to just Otis going on a killing spree, but we were able to get pretty lucky this time. With that said and done, everyone, let me know what you thought of Camp Grizzly down in the comment section below. Is this something that you were praying to the board game gods that comes back to Kickstarter at some point? Uh, maybe you were one of the lucky ones that happened to find this in the wild for a decent price. I could have gotten the game at 50 bucks years ago. And of course I didn't, not knowing it was gonna be what it is today. Kick myself every day for it, but it is what it is. Uh, just again, hoping for that Kickstarter to come out at some point uh, for somebody to have gotten the rights to Camp Grizzly and for them to uh, reprint it for everyone to enjoy and for the third party market to go down from like three, $400 back to a normal price for this. Look, Tom Vassell said it in an, uh, in like a, an update video not too long ago, so I believe him, I really do. In any event, thank you all once again for joining me on the, this adventure through Cramp, Camp, <laughs> Cramp. I got a cramp right now in my hand with all this uh, mouse movement. Uh, Camp Grizzly. Um, 
in order not to miss any other fun things that I put out for the month of October, because I have a few other spooky, scary, creepy things uh, on the docket coming out, be sure you're subscribed to the Home Gamer Dad. Of course, again, let me know all your thoughts about Camp Grizzly, and if you ever hope to get it one day for yourself. Yeah, man, we'll have to see how that goes. If you wish to support the channel even further, there are ways to do that down in the description section below. But as always, your view, your like, your share, your comment, subscribing, all go a long way to helping the channel grow. Thank you all so much for joining me on this romp around camp. Hopefully one day I'll be able to show you a physical version of this game. Until then, you guys have a good one, and I will catch you all later.